good afternoon, everyone, uh, all those in internet land as well. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, E-bikes. Um, we're well behind the rest of the world here in Australia. Um, sometimes we uh, we lead from the front, but uh, in, unfortunately, in uh, in the world of e-bikes, we're actually lagging a fair bit behind the rest of the world. So we've got some catching up to do. Uh, we've got some. I think we've got some laws that need to change in order to uh, get in alignment with uh, with uh, uh, allowing uh, everyone to have uh, more convenient and uh, low carbon options for uh, from getting. From point A to B to C, so uh, e-bikes I think are an uh, absolute uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, tool for that. Uh, I uh, I don't have a car. I ride uh, my electric bike uh, pretty much everywhere, anywhere, um, and I must declare that my electric bike is. Uh, is not street legal. It's a thousand watts. It does 45 kilometres an hour, and it will do somewhere between 35 kilometres to 60 kilometres on a 10 amp hour 48 volt battery. For those that are a bit techie minded, um, how many people here have had no experience with e-bikes? Show of hands. Okay. How many people know about the law of uh, e-bike laws? Okay. So some people not uh, don't know the the full story. All right. Maybe we'll start with the. Uh, with the uh, uh, electric bike laws. Uh, at the moment there's two laws running concurrently here in Victoria. One is for 200 watt bikes. Uh, a 200 watt bike can be operated by a throttle and is not speed limited. But I tell you with a 200 watt motor it's pretty hard to get over uh, over 30 kilometres an hour. Um, 37. Is it a mid mount? Is it a mid mount? Okay. Oh, very good. That's uh, that's very good performance. Uh, it must be wound for higher speed, for higher top speed. Um, there's also another law that's uh, running that's for uh, bikes up to 250 watts. Now, the original law was brought in at 200 watts. That was uh, that was the the uh, brainchild of uh, of some bureaucrat here in Australia who thought that that was uh, enough power. But since the rest of the world, uh, well, Europe is uh, currently using the 250 watt law, um, it meant that uh, bringing bikes in from the rest of the world was uh, was not really uh, um, able to be done legally. So they changed the law to encompass 250 watt bikes, uh, and those can be operated by a throttle, but only up to six kilometres an hour. After that. Uh, then they're operated by uh, the pedals. So when you pedal, uh, a sensor tells the motor to start, and then the motor will start uh, after you've started pedaling. Um, we call that pedelec, or pedal assistance, or PAS, that I'll be referring to as pedelec. Pathetic. Hmm? Or pathetic. Or pathetic. Yes. Yeah. That's that's another uh, another way of looking at it. So that's the law at the moment. Um, my, I just declare my, my uh, uh, personal preference on the law that the only things that should be uh, uh, that should be limited is the weight of a bike and its speed. I think they're the two things. They're the two things that uh, cause problems. The bike's very heavy and it's going very fast and it's going to cause a lot of damage. If it's uh, if it's light and it's speed limited, I think that maybe around 35 kilometres an hour would be fairly conservative. Um, uh, fair enough uh, speed for bikes, and that's what I uh, advocate. And uh, if anyone talks to me, that's what I put out there. Uh, that's where I think the law should be. And don't worry about uh, how much power it's got, because sometimes uh, people are incapacitated or heavy, and they live at the top of a hill, and they've got to grind their way up at the top of a hill. Then uh, why not let them have the power they need to be able to do that? Anyway, that's my little political rave. Um, as far as um, uh, I'll get on to how an electric motor works in in uh, in a nutshell. Is that we have uh, we have uh, uh, a uh, the axle and off the axle is all these windings of uh, of copper wire and uh, most electric motors uh, that would be that we use for uh, conversions and uh, whatnot have uh, uh, called a th have three phases. So they have three. Uh, the the uh, copper the copper windings are joined in sets of threes around so there'll be uh, 
the, the yellow set, the blue set, the green set, the yellow set, the blue set, the green set, as they go all the way around the, uh, around the axle. Then around the, uh, uh, around the uh, uh, rim or the outer of the, uh, of the electron motor is a whole lot of rare earth magnets. Now essentially what happens is when power is put through uh, into one set of those, uh, those copper coils, um, uh, that creates an uh, uh, electromagnetic effect that either um, attracts or repels from each of those magnets that are around the outside. So that's the way it works. And so it propels, repels, propels the, uh, the axle round in its rotation um, by switching between them. So each, each of those coils will be switching from positive to neutral to negative to neutral. So if we've got a, a magnet there and the coil there, as the coil is approaching, it'll be in the attraction phase, uh, uh, pull towards. When it's dead on, it'll be in neutral. And as it's moving away, it'll be in the negative phase, so it'll push, push away from the, uh, from the magnet. And that's essentially the, uh, the nuts and bolts of, of an um, internal electric motor. The brushless em uh, electric motors, which is the ones that uh, are used in all uh, uh, e-bikes now, um, a controlled by a controller. Controller can be very small, uh, as small as that. It can be as large as that, or even even larger. Big ones like that. The bigger they are, um, the more current they can take. The faster and the more powerful um, bike you can you can construct from it. So there's three major uh, well three major parts to a to a uh, to an e-bike. You've got the motor. You've got the controller, and you've got the battery. There's also the controls as well, um, but the three major parts of those. Uh, there's two styles of of, uh, of electric bikes that um, uh, two styles of motors for electric bikes, and I'll just show you them here. Um, here is what we call a mid mount motor. I'll just turn this one around so you can get a better view. This is one that um, that uh, a member of uh, the EV group has uh, has built from uh, what you can see is a fairly ordinary um, bike. Here's the motor here. Um, it's uh, it's connected to a, a, a gearbox uh, and uh, and then runs power through the chain um, to the rear wheel. The advantage of a mid mount motor is that it's able to supply its meager amount of power if it's uh, if we're looking at uh, a street legal 200 or 250 watt motor, it's able to apply the power through the chain so that um, it's able to use the gears. So you're able to use the power more efficiently. So you can gear um, the motor down for going up hills and gear the motor up for going down. So it's uh, a more efficient use of the power. Uh, the downsides for it is that it is a little bit complicated. It does wear out the chain um, faster and it is uh, a bit noisier. Um, uh, so that's the sort of uh, downsides to it, but uh, it is uh, a very efficient use of, uh, of your, your street legal power. Um, then uh, this one has its controller in a control bag there and the battery there. Now I'll just move over to, uh, to this one here. This is uh, one of the simplest kits. Um, it's got just a front hub motor. It's got the controller that's in the little bag here, and the battery in there. Um, this is uh, the hub motor. Um, it's what we call the mini gear motor. So um, the motor inside is revolving 12 times to uh, one revolution of the wheel, um, and that just uh, enables it to um, uh, to give you the torque and to give you the uh, um, a better performance than you would um, from uh, 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 I would eke out as much performance as you can from a 200 watt motor. Um, of course, this one's limited to 26 kilometers an hour because this one's geared through the back um, through the back gears. Um, it isn't actually uh, limited to any uh, to any particular speed. If you um, if you put it on uh, on uh, the top gear, then uh, you'd be able to do more than 26 kilometres an hour. Although your torque, your twisting force, your ability to accelerate will be uh, will be less. 
Uh, this one here has also got an auxiliary battery pack on the rear. Um, so that was the mini motor. Uh, this one here, uh, this is one of my one of my rides as well. Uh, this one is uh, is a thousand watt motor. It's um, it's also uh, what we call a direct ride. So one revolution of a motor is one revolution of the wheel. Um, uh, the advantage of a direct drive is that um, it's a lot more bomb proof. It doesn't have, um, uh, it, doesn't, it has less parts inside that are liable to break. And all the high powered motors will be running um, what we call the direct drive motor. The uh, motor here that the hub drive I was just talking about, that had the mini gear, this one, um, it has nylon gears in there, some inflammatory gears. Uh, and they're nylon rather than steel, because if they were steel, it would sound like a coffee grinder. <laughs> uh, very, very noisy. So with nylon or composite um, gears that are made of uh, a plastic mix, um, so to keep the noise down, but as you can understand, uh, plastic has its um, limitations about how much power you can put through it. Um, I personally have run a, a mini geared motor at 1,000 watts. Uh, it hasn't broken, but it is quite noisy and uh, does complain when I hit, hit hills. And uh, so the sound is not, uh, it, it is not music to my ears. Um, so they're sort of the, the, different, the different motors. If we're looking at um, price of motors, you can pick them up for as little as 200, uh, up to, uh, um, up to $1,000 for motors. But uh, for most of those, these motors, this motor here should be able to pick one up between two and four hundred dollars. This one here um, between about three and four hundred dollars, <coughs> uh, and this one here about three or four hundred dollars as well. Um, do, do you have to register them if they're over two fifty? You certainly uh, you do need to register them, but I don't. Um, I don't. I just. Uh, uh, I think that the law is ridiculous, and so I don't obey. Um, that's where I come from. I advocate that the law be changed, and in the meantime, until the law has caught up to what I think is ra uh, rationality, then uh, I ride uh, I ride a, a motor that uh, enables me to do 45 kilometres an hour, so that I don't have to use a car. And uh, I I work at festivals. Uh, I, I ride uh, 26 kilometres from home. Uh, in Warringai, into town, I'll do that in 45 minutes. Um, if I ride a pedal-only bike, it takes me about an hour and a half uh, because it's very hilly around my area, uh, and uh, it also means you know parking's a breeze. I work at festivals. I go through police roadblocks, give them a wave, uh, ride into the festival, and uh, chain up at the stage that I'm working at. Not a problem. How does it go on the hills in Warringai? This one uh, with me on board. Uh, I don't know if you know Harris Gully Road, it's a road that I live on. Uh, it is uh, steep, it's about uh, 600 metres of, uh, of heavy gradient. Uh, in a Toyota Echo, you need to knock it back into third gear and really get up the hill. Um, but with this, it almost gets me up without bending. Uh, that's a thousand watt, running at 48 volts. Um, if you run at a higher voltage, you get a higher. Uh, if you, um, you can eat more out of it if you more current. Um, some of the parameters uh, of uh, motors as, as well. Uh, if you, uh, the, the speed of the motor is governed by two things. One is the windings on the inside of the motor, uh, which you can get them wound for higher torque or higher top speed uh, in specialty cases. Uh, but the other uh, aspect that, uh, that limits its speed is the voltage. So the higher the voltage, the higher the top speed. Um, the more current, um, then the more torque you get. So that's uh, sort of give you an idea. So if you were to buy a 36 volt uh, motor or 36 volt kit, and you went, this is just not fast enough for me, then you could couple it with a 48 volt battery, and you would get increased speed. Uh, if you wanted more torque, then you'd need to be able to supply more current to the motor. Um, so increase the number of amps that are running to the motor. Um, Do you have to pedal that one near you all the time if the motor's 
This one? Uh, no, it, uh, there's a free wheel mechanism in there, so you can just uh, you know, sit lazy on the pedals and let the motor do the work. Um, it's the same uh, really for, for all e-bikes. None of them uh, you have to uh, pedal all the time, unless they've got the pedal assist system, the PAS, um, which will have a... Um, it'll have a little sensor that'll be put on the bottom bracket, usually, uh, and then as the pedals start going round, it, uh, it senses that, the, that it's moving, and then it'll allow current to the motor, and then start the motor. So when you stop pedaling, the motor will stop. But the, um, that, that's, uh, isn't that illegal now? You must have pedal assist. Uh, you, uh, as I was saying before, that the uh, the 200 watt law allows you to use the throttle. Um, so if you've got a 200 watt motor, you can use a throttle. If you've got a 250 watt motor, then it's pedal assist, but you can use a throttle up to six kilometres an hour. Yeah, but as I understood it, uh, people who have the throttle can keep using the throttle, but they're not allowed to sell ones nowadays. Uh, uh, I, that's that's not. It, okay, I'll just let you know on that. It's it's not it's not illegal to sell anything, right? You can sell whatever. You can sell a, 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 a um, you know a hundred thousand um, watt motor um, that'll do gazillion miles an hour. It's not illegal, right? In the same way, it's not illegal to buy a huge, huge petrol engine, right? But it might be illegal to put it in a in a Toyota Corolla and then drive at 200 kilometres along uh, the freeway. That's illegal. It's the application that's illegal, not the device. So the police aren't going to bust you uh, for uh, having a sneaky uh, 500 watt motor in your in your closet. Um, but if you're on the road and the police are uh, uh, are wise to it, which in my understanding of my experience of 10,000 kilometres on the road is that they're not, um, that you, you can tell them any story at the moment. And in the end, you can baffle them by saying, uh, okay, is that 250 watts, uh, do you mean um, uh, input or is that output? Is that peak or is that average? Like, what are you talking about? And uh, let's see. Yes. And if you're pedaling, and maybe not for any effort, at any speed, just about. Why would they bother looking at it? Exactly. If you're doing 45 kilometres an hour and you're not turning the crank, it may raise suspicion. My uh, the way I, I see it is that um, if you want to keep the uh, you want to keep all the the the, uh, the 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 negative energy away, then you make this little motion with your legs, right? <laughs> and then it keeps all the negative energy away. As long as people, if you if it looks like a bike and you're pedalling it like a bike. Then people will think it's a bike. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I know of someone who was actually uh, picked up by the police in a country town. Uh, they were on a trike. They were doing thirty kilometres an hour. They were going uphill, and they weren't pedalling. Obviously, the, the, when the police asked them, uh, "Yeah, is that a two hundred and fifty watt motor?" They went, "Yeah, I think so." And uh, he said, "Well, okay. Well, next time I see you, you've got to be able to prove it." I said, well, how do I do that? Uh, well, I don't know. And so, you know, it sort of went round in circles uh, and uh, nothing happened to him. I also know of someone who, uh, I don't know if anyone knows stealth bikes. They're uh, bikes that, uh, they look like a motorbike. They look like a, a motocross bike, uh, motorbike. And uh, they can do about 70 kilometres an hour. They're, they are 3,500 watts of power. For, yeah, I've actually I've ridden one that's twelve thousand. Um, uh, that was amazing uh, and scary, but uh, <laughs> exhilarating. Uh, and I know someone who tried to outrun the police on one of these. <laughs> uh, he uh, he'd only had the bike for two days, and he was showboating a little bit on the road, and you know doing the sort of things that attract the attention. So. Uh, you know, he went and did a bit of a dodgy, sneaky, and then uh, pulled into someone's backyard and, you know, hiding there, but the police found him. In the end, uh, when he was taken to court, uh, he got no conviction, but he was ordered to pay $600 to a charity. <laughs> right, so um, that's, the, that's the situation there. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah. Oh, there's one other uh, little commercial thing I must say, is that uh, I'm the convener of the EV group 
uh, part of the ATA, but I'm also uh, part of uh, Rev Bikes. So um, uh, just declaring my commercial interest. That's a Rev Bike. Uh, that's a, a Rev Bike, and uh, this one's not. Um, right. So we've got we've got the the motors, and I've given you a bit of a rundown of those. Uh, then uh, the controllers. Uh, there's a whole lot of electricery in there. For those that want to know, there's single or double MOSFETs. The best MOSFETs I've found are four double one zeros. Um, there's uh, a company, uh, a, a person in the, the UK who makes uh, custom made controllers called Lion, Edward Lion. He makes very good controllers. Uh, and people who are um, uh, powering their bikes to uh, well past the ones that I uh, usually ride. Uh, we'll be using those line controllers. Um, uh, the other thing is that on uh, on e-bikes we've got uh, we've got the controls. So um, you've got your, your throttle. You can have a, a twist, like on this one here, or you can have uh, thumb, which is uh, on this one here, little thumb control, and uh, then you've got uh, brake levers. These brake levers, uh, what they do is they cut power to the motor. So uh, in that panic situation where you've got the motor going, as soon as you apply the brakes, it immediately cuts power to the motor, uh, and then uh, your normal friction brakes will be applied. Uh, a great thing to have. On some kits, there's a cruise control button on uh, the kits that we do. There's a cruise control button so you can get up to speed so you don't have to have your your hand uh, twisted or uh, thumb on the throttle all the time. Very handy and of course when uh, when uh, a pedestrian runs out in front of you, you just grab the anchors and it immediately cuts power and not a problem. Um, the other thing is batteries. Batteries, batteries, batteries. Well, um, the, these days lithium is the, uh, is the battery of choice but there's many sorts of uh, lithium. There's different lithium chemistries, and there's different lithium uh, there's different uh, lithium uh, um, constructions. So um, we have these sort of lithium batteries. Um, this style is called an 18650, um, and they're pretty much like a double A sort of battery. They look very much the same. They're rechargeable. And they last. Uh, uh, at least 500 charge cycles. That's from uh, empty to full. Um, they're a good um, compact, um, high, high density, uh, high density energy battery. Um, there's uh, there, and as far as the chemist, uh, there's also another sort in the construction which are called prismatic or uh, sandwich sort. They're sort of flat. They're also known as lipo. Um, meaning lithium polymer, um, but they're sort of flat. They'll use them in uh, remote control cars and uh, remote control aircraft and all that sort of stuff because they can pump out a lot of charge um, uh, and they're quite light. Uh, the downside to them is that they can delaminate and they are for the for the uh, unexperienced. Uh, in batteries, they can be a little bit volatile. They have been known to catch fire. Um, and there was actually a, one of the uh, the solar race cars that had was I think a, a couple of million dollars worth of uh, research and development in it, and uh, they had uh, lipo cells in uh, their car, and uh, uh, they didn't have an exhaust pipe on it, but it started to smoke. So uh, it wasn't exhaust from uh, from uh, any sneaky petrol engine. It was the uh, the batteries. Uh, uh, one of the cells had failed, uh, called a cascade effect, and uh, in a few minutes the uh, the car was completely incinerated. So, um, for those that are um, experienced in in batteries, uh, lipos, lovely. Uh, I don't touch them because I I, uh, I just think they're, um, they're they're great, but they're a double edged sword on that front. Um, I just deal with these ones. Um, those uh, 18650. Uh, yep. E each cell, how, how, how many volts? Okay, each uh, each cell when it's when it's fully charged, it fully charge it to uh, around about 4.1, 4.15, even to 4.2 volts. What the little 
that little one, yeah. four volts, just one of those is four volts. It's also two amp hour. So amp hour is the capacity. So it's uh, uh, the voltage can be seen it, uh, a little bit like uh, the amount of octane that uh, your petrol has got, and uh, then <coughs> the two amp hour is a little bit like how much uh, how much petrol it's got. Um, these uh, um, also have a what we call a C rating. A C rating is its discharge rating. So although batteries batteries are not batteries in that some of them um, will hold a lot of charge, but will only let it out slowly at a, at a low low rate. Others uh, won't hold so much uh, charge, but they'll they'll let it out in a big punch. So um, these ones are rated 2C. So it's a 2 amp hour battery rated at 2C. It means it can deliver 4 amps. That one battery will deliver 4 amps at around about 4 volts. Right? So uh, <clears throat> you just couple them together in parallel and series and you'll be able to make a battery. For those that want to know more about uh, battery uh, um, building, I'll talk to you uh, about that. Um, this spike here has got uh, um, a battery that's been made from these cells um, in there, and it's also got an auxiliary battery for when the rider wants to go uh, uh, a further distance uh, on the back here, and they're both uh, wired to the motor. Um, now, as far as uh, doing a, a conversion, I'll just show you uh, quickly on a on this uh, this bike here. Now, in order to do a conversion. All you need to do, I'll, I'll talk um, what I'm most familiar with, which is the hub motor, and it's the easiest motor to do a conversion on. Um, you can buy a kit uh, from, uh, you can get them uh, from China, you can get them locally, you can uh, get them even from red bikes. Um, so what the kit will, will, uh, will have, it will have a, a wheel, um, the hub motor, usually already laced into a wheel, so all you need to do is uh, unbolt your wheel, take it out, replace it with with the the, uh, with the hub motor. Um, now, with uh, with the more high powered motors, we have to put something in that we call a torque bar, because you can imagine the wheel wants to spin this way under the, when you apply um, power. It means that the axle wants to spin the opposite way, and you can imagine every time you brake and you accelerate, that axle is being bashed back and forward, back and forwards, and it can cause stress on uh, on the dropout, which is where the axle sits. So on the high-powered motors, we put a uh, a little um, uh, a little uh, bar in there that's then um, bolted to the frame or hose clamped to the frame, and uh, the axle there has got two shaded sides. So when it goes in and the torque bar is over the top, it prevents the axle from wanting to, to move. Uh, if you've got uh, aluminium or, uh, heaven forbid, carbon fibre, please don't use carbon fibre, um, uh, it will cause um, uh, it, to, uh, um, it to fail around here without using a torque bar. We usually use two. One in one direction, one in another. <laughs> one's for acceleration, one's for deceleration. Right. So it doesn't act like a clutch, really? No, it doesn't act like a clutch. What it does is it just stops. Uh, it, it just braces that uh, that um, axle from wanting to spin in the dropouts. So um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's extra security. So after you've dropped in your wheel. Um, and uh, that's usually pretty easy to do. If you've got disc brakes, most of them have a, uh, a place for mounting disc brakes. So you put your, uh, you take off the disc brake or off your wheel, and then uh, there's usually six bolts that hold, in, hold it into place. You put those, uh, take that, that out, uh, place the, the disc brake back on, and also make sure that uh, the disc brake uh, is in the same, uh, uh, it's facing the same way. Don't turn it around the other way because uh, the way those uh, bracing um, bars go, they're made in you know, that direction uh, for a purpose because uh, it gives the uh, um, the best strength. 
So after you've dropped your wheel in, you've, uh, you've tightened it up, then there'll be a, a cable that comes out. You can run that cable along the frame. And, uh, and then that, uh, that cable uh, comes up here into the controller. Move it now to the controller in a bag in the back here. <coughs> there is the controller. Now don't be scared about, uh, like it looks like a spaghetti junction of wires. They're, they're all labelled and it's just plug and play really. It's, uh, you just uh, disconnect the, the, the cables together. Um, this kit, um, most of the, the wires are colour coded, but in true, true uh, Chinese fashion, a couple of them are not. So there's a purple and a blue together, but they are labelled. So um, don't get too uh, <coughs> don't get too uh, uh, overawed by by the uh, what seems like a complexity there. It really is just uh, um, plugging the colours together. Um, the other thing that you need to do is just put the controls on. Now, see here, we've used uh, one, one of the uh, uh, brakes from the kit, which has got a, the, uh, the cutoff, um, it's got the cutoff uh, function on it, and this here we've just left as a normal brake on that side, just for something different. You do so many bikes, we just uh, change them up. So you do that on the front, preferably for the one to use it. Well, you're supposed to use it most. If you're, if you're a motorbike rider, you use your front brake most, but we'll find when most people are riding bikes, they uh, they generally don't use the front brake the most. They usually use the rear brake the most. Although 70% of the braking force is through the front, uh, as you uh, imagine, uh, it's pretty easy to skip the back wheel, but in the front, um, it uh, holds much better. And, and uh, for those that uh, that are, uh, are riding bikes, best you know, uh, brake with both. Um, uh, much better uh, stopping. So taking off the uh, taking off the the, uh, the handlebar grips can be a complete pain sometimes uh, because they do get stuck on. These ones, uh, fortunately, have been on and off uh, quite a few times. There's a few ways to be able to get them off. One is uh, lean your bike over and uh, put the uh, uh, put the hand grip into uh, some hot water, and that loosens it up gets it off. The other thing is if you've got a can of WD-40, you can uh, sneak the nozzle down there and give it a squirt and give, give it a bit of a twist and then it'll come off. Um, then when you need to put them back on later, you need to clean out the WD-40, otherwise they'll just spin around in your hand. Cooking oil them. as well. Cooking oil. <laughs> Cooking oil. There we go. Ah, we need to take them off like that in order to be able to get the controls on. So we've got uh, the cruise control here, and we've got the, the brake, and then we've got the uh, the regular gears. So they slide on. You need to undo the gears and move it a little bit along the uh, along the, the uh, handlebars to make room for the uh, the extra control. Put your uh, um, hand grip back on. On this side, we put the throttle on the left hand side. Um, most motorbikes, of course, will have the throttle on the right hand side. Uh, but with most motorbikes, when you want to turn right, you just hit the indicators. With a bike, you want to turn right, you want to do this. When you're turning left, you don't have to do that, really, because you're not cutting across traffic. So it's good to have the throttle on the left-hand side, so you can do this and still be throttling along. Um, so, but for some people, uh, having the throttle on the right-hand side just feels more, uh, more natural. So we've got the thro throttle there, we've got the cruise control, we've got the uh, cut-off brake functions. Uh, and all those cables then just get uh, uh, put together, run down the frame. Oh, sorry, is it for me? <laughs> Tell them I'm busy. Um, so, and they'll run down the frame, and then you run them into uh, into the bag here, and then here they clip into here. So, um, this one here is the cutoff brakes. This one here. Is uh, the, uh, the the lights? Uh, this one's for cruise control. Uh, this one's for horn. This one's for the throttle. Uh, and what am I missing? Ah, yes. The wires that come out of the uh, that come out out of the, uh, the motor. This is what we call a sensored motor. So 
um, it has hall sensors. And what the hall sensors do is they tell the motor, um, they, uh, they, they let the motor know when, when power needs to be a, a, a applied to in order to get it to spin from start up. There are what we call sensorless motors. Um, they, uh, uh, they need, you really need to get them moving before they'll start properly. Sometimes they'll shatter start, they'll be uh, not very smooth to start up. Uh, so a sensored um, uh, motor is, uh, is the way to go. So that's the, the plug for the, for the sensors that come from the motor, the hall sensors. For those that uh, want to read up, the hall effect, very interesting and uh, bizarre um, uh, little electrical anomaly. So that's for that. And then I was saying before about motors having three phases. Right, here we go. We've got the yellow, the green, and the blue. The blue phase. Where's the blue one? Please? So from the motor, we just plug in those three, those three wires and, and this one. And uh, then you've, uh, you've got your motor connected. Now the next thing is the batteries. You can notice this one doesn't have a battery on it. Um, this one is, uh, I'm planning to actually make a battery for this one. So what, I've, um, what I want to do is I want to make a battery that fits in here. Because this is too small for a, for a, a decent, um, uh, high powered, long range battery that you can buy commercially. So what I've done is I've made a template like this that's uh, the, the inner of the, uh, the, the triangle and then I'll be making a battery with these to suit, to fill in that space as much as possible to be able to give me um, as much uh, range as I can. Essentially the more of these I put in, the further I can go. With, uh, with most with most sort of uh, um, legal um, powered kits like this, your range will be somewhere between 35 and 50 kilometres an hour. Some people, uh, sorry, 35 to 50 kilometres. That'll be sort of the range that you can expect from uh, from a, a street legal um, e-bike with the the usual batteries that are uh, that are uh, connected. Um, the more amp hours you have, the further you can go. Um, and most uh, uh, e-bike kits will have uh, batteries ranging from 8 to uh, uh, 16, sometimes up to 20 um, amp hours. But generally they'll be around the 10, the 10 amp hours. Yes? What is your operating problem? You're going to be self here Okay, uh, for that one there, it's the operating voltage is nominally 48, so we call it a 48 volt battery, but in fact when it's charged, it's at 58, and when it gets down to, to what we consider empty, it'll be down at 42. So it's 58 full, 42 empty. So if you've got a voltmeter and you want to find out how much power, how much uh, range you've got left in your battery, you can check, see what the voltage is. That's the way to be able to tell uh, on that. Yes? Is that linear or? Oh, sorry, just at the back there? Um, I'm just curious, or I'm clearly just a hobby for you, but why would any hobby person do that to a bike versus buying a purpose built e bike if you were going out to the shop and buying that money? What advantage do you get out of converting it to sell? Well, one is cost. Does that just seems like a hell of a lot. Mine's a purpose built, easy to buy. Yep. So I went on that one and I rode it home. Yep. And it does everything. Uh, uh, you can get uh, um, uh, a bike that uh, costs less. So, uh, you can get a bike that might tolerate the stress you put on it. And you end up killing yourself on a cold car. If it's not built. Because you can uh, take a converted kit on a $100 target bike. Yep. Oh, well, actually, I, I disagree with you. Uh, a target bike is made of steel, right? Um, if I uh, if I get myself uh, a ten thousand um, dollar road bike, it's made of carbon fiber. Right? If I sneeze, the thing breaks. Um, so uh, the advantage of doing your own conversion is that you can get uh, more power, 
You can get, uh, uh, and uh, you can get, uh, even if you don't want more power, you can get a bike that will uh, cost um, half as much. If you've already got a bike that you, uh, that you own at the moment that you like, but you live uh, in a hilly area and you go, well, it just sits in the garage gathering dust, you can pull it out, put a kit on it, and uh, you can get a bike that, uh, that will do, uh, um, do the distances and uh, give you the power that you want. That's the advantage of, uh, of kits over shop bought bikes. Um, there are, I've seen some uh, uh, bikes for, uh, for as little as $500, e-bikes for as little as $500. Um, and I see them because people bring them in to me and saying, it's, oh, I've had it for three months and it's broken. Uh, I work in a bike shop as well, and I had uh, someone come in uh, who had a bike for three months. They're getting a range of five kilometres from their bike, uh, and they paid uh, over $2,000 for it, uh, and it's in for warranty servicing. Um, that uh, although um, you know, it might be bright and shiny, uh, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's uh, high quality. Uh, essentially, uh, you know, the, in most things in life, uh, a rough indicator of quality is price, but uh, not always. Um, of course, uh, if you want something to seem like it's higher quality, then you put a higher price tag on it. Um, yeah. If I may yes. actually add to the answer to the question, I yeah. love my third electric bike because I'm just not happy with the previous two. And I, I, I have to say that uh, more you know, off the shelf electric bikes, I find the geometry just appalling. Now, Taken one of my really good bikes that I've customized in terms of geometry and fit to the nth degree, and I'm having an electric bike, or effectively transferring one of the electrics from, from the old one because I find it uh, off the shelf bikes are just too heavy, too hard to move, and they try to make them one size fits all, but they're just not the case. Yeah, that that is uh, something that a, a lot of people have said to me. Why is so small? You need a small height. Yeah. Just the way it goes, man. Yeah. yeah. So. And also, can, I'm, I'm now, my whole kit is like it's about five and a half kilos. All off the shelf electric bikes are twenty kilos plus. Yeah, they are heavier. I mean, I'm not, I'm not um, dissing uh, uh, like uh, factory made electric bikes at all. There are some absolute perlers out there. But you do actually pay the money for for them. Uh, there is uh, quite a few that are just uh, really quite amazing. But you're looking at uh, you know three thousand plus, and uh, fine if that if uh, that's the way you want to go. That's uh, perfectly okay. But uh, for me, what I find is I also want a longer range. So. Um, <laughs> If you want to talk about why you want to convert them, this is probably not the place. Yeah, yeah. I'm really yeah, interested in learning yeah. how. Yeah. So, um, so the, 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 the three things we've got the, the, the motor, the battery, and uh, the controller. Um, uh, those are the things that you need to fit either uh, the controller in the bag, there's also uh, plastic boxes that will fit uh, the controller. Um, uh, Around here or in other places on the bike, um, and also uh, the controls that go onto the uh, onto the handlebars. Um, some uh, uh, the the easier conversions to do are the ones to the front wheel because uh, then uh, uh, they're just so much easier. Just put the wheel in, uh, no problem. You don't need to uh, uh, worry about um, uh, on when you do a rear wheel. You need to put uh, the, the the rear cluster, which is which is uh, the gears here. The rear most uh, most kits will have a screw-on cluster, and uh, most uh, shop uh, most uh, most modern bikes these days have got a spline cluster. Uh, these are only about twenty or thirty dollars, and they literally just screw on. So uh, um, that's what you do for a rear. For the front, it's nice and easy. Just uh, drop the wheel in, as you can see on the, the spike here. Um, is there a limit to how you can transmit from the front tire? Um, I've got a bike that's uh, I've got a thousand watts that I put through the front, uh, and that's uh, fine. I, I, I find though, though when I'm going uphill on gravel, yep. then I'm, uh, I'm spinning uh, a bit and throwing a few uh, stones around. So. Um, it's better, the more power you've got, it's better to put it in the rear, but if you're just doing the, 
the street legal, then putting it in the front is fine. As you can see here, on this one here, putting it on the front. This bike here is actually an Audi bike, um, $119 on Audi. <laughs> this kit um, is uh, $900. So that for a grand, you've got uh, a bike. Um, uh, we took. We took uh, that style of battery on a motor that was twice as large, and we did. Uh, uh, it had a pedelec as well, so it was uh, working the pedelec. So it did about uh, uh, 60 k's on a charge. So um, that's the sort of uh, um, range you can you can generally expect from uh, that. That battery there is 36 volt and 8 amp power. So um, um, yeah, pretty good uh, little, little kit that one. Um, is there uh, any other questions on stuff? Up to you first. Um, I've just noticed the bird's nest in your bag under the saddle at the back, and it is basically yep. a heat sink case. So do you recommend keeping it out of the bag or putting it in? In other words, should it get rid of its inherent heat? In the atmosphere, or can you put it in a bag and get away with it? You can uh, put it in a bag and, and uh, get away with it. Uh, it's uh, the more the more current you're um, you using, then uh, the, the greater uh, the heat build up is. Um, but uh, most uh, in most cases, you can uh, you can you can get away with that with the uh, uh, with the um, lower power with the street legal. Ones uh, that uh, really the amount of heat is not okay. is not a lot. They don't really run hot. No, no, uh, no, they don't. They don't run uh, uh, really hot. Of course, more high powered than uh, than you'll find. People who are running uh, much more high powered will uh, bolt the uh, uh, the controller quite often to the frame down here, so the frame will act as a heat sink. So any heat that uh, uh, is generated will uh, dissipate through the frame of the bike and uh, to the air. But that's fine. Right? On this one here, um, this one will do uh, around about uh, um, around about 100 k's at uh, at about 30 35 k's um, an hour. How many hours is that? Um, this is. Eight and this is twelve, I think. So it's uh, it's twenty there. This uh, this motor is not uh, very efficient. Um, a friend of ours got it and uh, and put it on. That's his uh, uh, first uh, mid drive conversion, mid mount conversion, and uh, the that motor is a bit a bit cheap and cheerful. Um, I think he got that one for under two hundred dollars, and uh, again. Uh, you sort of uh, you, you pay a little less, and uh, sometimes the uh, uh, yeah the efficiency efficiency isn't so uh, isn't so fantastic. So there are two types of regenerative regenerative braking. Yeah, you can have regen uh, braking, which is um, this uh, the direct drive model. It's got regen braking. The uh, the mini geared motors, which are most of the street legal ones are, don't have regen braking. Regen braking is fantastic for slowing you down. Without having to use your friction brakes, uh, and it generates, on average, between about uh, two percent extra electricity to uh, put, put back in your battery. So it doesn't really extend. Hmm? Regenerative braking is efficient Yeah, well, going downhill. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, when, uh, that's right. That's right. When you uh, when you go past, if you're going down a, a steep hill. And uh, the the bike is going faster than the top speed of uh, of the direct drive motor. So this motor will do um, uh, without any load on it. It'll do 50 kilometres an hour. So when I go above 50 kilometres an hour, then it'll turn into a generator and start putting power back into the battery. If you're not, if you haven't got the throttle open, mm -hmm. what's it going to be doing? Because you're not you're not supplying. Now, if I'm going down, if I'm going downhill over 50 kilometres an hour, regardless of where the throttle is, it'll be uh, uh, generating power. It In, won't be generating power if you've got the throttle right down. Yes, it will. It will be generating. 
Yeah. Even if you're only doing 20. No, 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 no. Like I said, it went, once you're going faster than the top speed, right, yeah. uh, which is 50 kilometres, then uh, and you're going downhill, it'll uh, have the regen function. Where the regen occurs is, of course, when you, when you pull on the brakes uh, and then uh, it uh, goes into regen mode and uh, um, will uh, then uh, help slow you down and also push a little bit of power back into the battery. Yeah, so why, why can't it uh, be in regen mode when you're uh, coasting down a hill at 20 with the top coast? Because it's not as good a brownie. It's, it's, uh, it should be, shouldn't it? Yes, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I haven't seen any that do. Um, uh, I'm sure that it's, poss it's uh, possible to be engineered that way, but. Uh, Generally, uh, controllers are not engineered in that sort of fa uh, uh, in that sort of fashion. Yes. When you complete your packing practice, what's the range you're expecting? This one, I'm, I think I'll uh, do a 48 volt 18 amp hour. So uh, I get about uh, 60 kilometres uh, doing uh, doing 45 kilometres an hour. Um, that's the minimum I'd expect. Um, if you halve the speed you're doing, uh, essentially you'll double the distance you can go. And you'll play around with series and parallel to get that. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about that then. Uh, that's a, uh, it's a 14x. <coughs> so 14 uh, groups of cells in series. Uh, and for an 18 amp hour, it would be. It'll be uh, uh, 9. Of those cells in each group, so nine, nine cells uh, uh, times fourteen. Right. So, so whatever that. Series and then nine parallels of the. Yep. Of the fourteen. That's right. Yeah. We are yep. going to have to wrap up there. Okay. Um, there is a uh, open forum Q and A style uh, coming up at two thirty, um, and most of the speakers, yourself included, are willing yep. to take questions outside of the box. Thank you. Okay, thank you.